Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about the game instance. But first I wanted to demonstrate something for you. So let's hit play and go into our game. And if you guys remember from previous tutorials, once we collected all these nebula coins, we were transported to our second level. Now I want you guys to notice our score in the bottom left is 13. Watch what happens when I collect the final coin. So we go to the new world. We have some more coins up here to collect but our score started over at zero. Now why is that? Well, unfortunately this guy that we're running around with right now, even though he looks exactly like the guy that we played with in the first level, they're two completely different characters, at least according to the computer. So every level that starts, a new character gets reinitialized, which means they get recreated from a default slate. So this guy is basically like the girl in 50 first dates. He can only remember what happened to him in one level. And as soon as you go to another level, he completely forgets everything that happened. So how do we stop that from occurring if we want to, say, remember the score from level 1 and add it to the coins that we're collecting in level 2? Well, that's where a game instance comes in handy. A game instance is basically like the elephant of blueprints. Once you tell it something, it never forgets. So we're going to create our own game instance. If we right-click here in our content browser, and we go to Blueprint Class, and we search for Game Instance. And we'll select this one here, and we'll call this Tutorial Game Instance. Now, we can open this up, and what we're going to want to do in here is just create two functions. The first one we're going to call Set Game instance score and the second one we're going to create is set player score now if you remember we create functions when we want to do something over and over again without having to write the same code so this is something that we're going to want to do at the end of each level is set the game instance score and set player score so that's why I'm putting these two into functions so for set player score what we're going to need to do is first cast to our player character. We can get player character here. And what we're going to want to do is say set score. So we can drag out of our third person and get our player's score. And we'll hook the execution up like this. And we're going to create one variable. And we will call this player score and in parentheses I'll put game so I don't get them confused and we'll make this an integer and we're gonna drag this out and drop it right on this pin here and it'll create the connection for us We can compile and save this so now this function is going to get our third person character it's gonna get whatever our game score is and it's gonna set our player score to that value right here now if we go into our other function, set game instance score, this is going to do the exact opposite. But again, we're going to need to drag out, cast to our third person character, or whatever character you guys are using. We'll get player character. But this time, instead of setting our score, we're going to drag out of here and get score. And then we're going to drag out our player score, hold alt to set, and we're going to set our player score in the game, so the game's memory of this, to whatever our current score is for that level that the player knows. So we can compile and save these. And that's all we're going to need for our game instance. Now the other thing I'm going to need you guys to do is go into settings and go to project settings here. And I forgot to do this a couple of times, so I had to remake this tutorial. So we'll go into maps and modes. And if you guys will see at the bottom, it says game instance. We're going to want to change that to our tutorial game instance now. This is also where you can change the startup map or the default map that your game is going to basically like your main menu. You can change that here with the drop down menu. And that's all we need to do here so we can close this out. So now we're going to need to actually call these functions. So if we go into our widget, and we go to the event graph. 
we're going to need to get a reference to our game instance first. So we can drag off event construct and say cast to tutorial game instance. And the nice thing about the game instance, it's really easy to get these object references. Just like you do with player character, you can drag out and just say get game instance. And then we can right click here and promote it to a variable. We can call it game instance ref. And hook up our execution pins here. And now we have a nice reference to our game instance. So now we can go into our add score. And as you guys see here, we're checking for the coin win from our win re uh, conditions reference here. So if we have collected all the coins, before we open up this new world here, what we want to do is save our player's score. So we can get this score here from our player. And we're going to want to set our game instance score. So we'll drag our game instance reference out and select get. And then we will call the function set game instance score. And this will take care of everything else. Hook that up like this. And we'll hook this up like that. Now if we compile and save, the last thing we need to do, not in here, is go into our third person character. And we're also going to need to create a reference to our game instance here. So off of begin play, we can cast to our tutorial game instance. And same thing, we can just say git game instance and right click here and create a variable reference. And now that we have that, what we want to do is call the function that sets the player score. So now every time we create a third person character, the last thing it's going to do is basically ask our game instance, what should my score be? And that's what this function is going to do. So we'll compile and save. Now if we hit play, we see our score starts at 0. We're going to start collecting some coins. Our score is at 13. It went to 14. And now, as you see, we go into the second level. And our score is still 14. And we can continue to add from here. And that's the benefit of having a game instance. It can remember things like that. It persists between levels. So anything that you guys want to remember from level to level, whether it was you know, player stats, whether your player got hurt, scores, anything like that, uh, the game instance is a really good blueprint to use to store that kind of information. All right, guys, I hope you thought that was helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more tutorials. All right, see you guys later.